Hey guys, welcome back to the front line. How you guys doing? I hope everybody's doing well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and bring y'all back to the main, stream, main screen. Uh, I'm still having fun with the Kens, y'all, because the Kens came on in and took over, didn't they? You know, guys, I keep telling y'all where it started, right? And a few weeks back, if y'all remember, I made a claim about Israel, right guys? And I told you, I had my suspicions that Leah and Rachel may not have the same mother, right? The Torah tells us who their father is. I couldn't find in the Torah who their mother is. So I got to digging, right, guys? Did a genealogical, ugh, I messed that word up. Genealogical dig, right, guys? I'm not going to get into that this week. I'm going to bring y'all into that uh, in the coming weeks because in order for me to get y'all to understand what happened here, I'm going to have to take y'all on a little journey, all right? A little family affair. And I'm going to have to prove this to y'all, what I see. This uh, switcheroo that took place, right? A week or two ago, I told y'all when we speak and we read the Torah, I asked y'all a question. Why is it that the Creator mentions Israel and Judah, as if Judah is outside of Israel. And I told you guys to do your own study on that, right? Southern Kingdom. Who was the Southern Kingdom made up of, guys? Judah, Levi, Benjamin. Everybody else is in the Northern Kingdom. And the northern kingdom specifically is called Ephraim and Israel. All right. So I started digging, right, guys? <clears throat> now, I told y'all, excuse me, guys, I got a little cough thing going. Hold on. <clears throat> now, I told you guys, right, so what I'm going to do before I get started, right, um, we're going to break this up into, you know, maybe 20 minutes, maybe 30 minute episodes um, to not, uh, one, to not make this into too long of one video, but to keep piggybacking off of this, guys. You know, I told y'all I just started studying, right, back in, what, February, March, right, guys? And for me, I feel like the creator has me on a microwave diet. When it comes to this Torah, right? And so I get it and fast forward. So I have to break, I have to like slow myself down and say, well, how am I going to show that to them? You know, um, because this is a lot to absorb. We're going on a genealogical ride. We're going on a historical ride. We're going, <laughs> we're digging guys. All right. So it, I don't want y'all to get lost in this. I can't afford y'all to, you know, I take this as a huge responsibility. So, so as not to overwhelm myself, I mean, I may uh, record a couple of these episodes in one setting, but release them periodically. Um, but so as to not overwhelm you guys, I don't want to throw it all at you at one time. I need y'all to follow this. Okay. Because um, I have to show this to y'all in a crockpot version. Right, slow it down for y'all so y'all can absorb this, see what happened, and um, so y'all can keep up with me. All right, I don't want to lose anybody, you know what I mean? This is new to me. Um, I have never had to uh teach, you know, I, I worked in the field of um, of uh, disability services, so I taught a few people, you know, life goals and things like that. You know, I have a counseling background, so a mental health background, guys, too. So 
um, yeah, I've taught those, you know, life skills, work skills, um, how to make yourself marketable when you come out of the hospital uh, to get a job and, you know, become a member of society again after a long-term hospitalization. You know, I've never done this, guys. And, um, but I have to because I'm seeing it and I know what I'm seeing and I know you guys haven't been shown this. You know, y'all been shown a bunch of BS. I was too. But this is all in the tour, guys. So it's a huge responsibility and I take it very seriously, guys. So I've been trying to rack my brain as to how to bring y'all this, right? Because like I said, the mothers to Rachel and Leah, they ain't listed in the Torah. Only Laban, right? Um, but somebody else caught on to this. So we'll we'll get into that uh, article probably like next week or the week after, guys. But somebody else caught on to this too. Okay. So I have to show, show you guys how we got from Esther to that edict by the king with Baal. Right, guys? I got to show you all how the kins came in and took over. Right? How it all went down. Right. And I had to prove to you guys what's the deal with the creator saying Israel and Judah. Right. If everybody's under Israel, then what's going on here? You know, I asked myself this question. Right. So long story short, I started researching the mothers, guys. Remember, I told you Rachel means you, E-W-E, a lamp. OK, guys. And uh, remember, I told you that Leah means wild ox, right? We saw Leah with the Holy Grail. We see Hila stating that Leah is a maid servant of hers. We saw all this crazy stuff going on in the background, right? So I wanted to dig on the mothers like never before, right? These are our matriarchs, right? These two sisters, right? Shout out to my sister. What's up, Unifiers? I know she's listening. I appreciate that, sis. I respect and love you. So listen, guys, uh, these two sisters, though, I had to dig like never before because these are our matriarchs, right? You know, Joseph had a dream, you know? Remember that dream? Joseph had a dream, right? That his grain would stand tall while the 11 others didn't. No, he didn't say how many were in the other in that dream. He never gave numbers, but in the second dream he did. So uh, Joseph seems to be like a central figure, right? Um, who's the mother of Joseph? Rachel, right? Rachel has Joseph, and she dies giving birth to Benjamin, guys, right? I'm going to get on to this, guys. I'm trying to build you up to all of this, right? And uh, Leah, Leah has uh, Reuben, Simeon, uh, Levi, Levi, Reuben, Simeon, Judah, of course, right? And Dina, okay? She has Dina. Now, we know Reuben uh, loses his place. Uh, I don't want to talk too much about what happens to them because sometimes I get things confused if I don't have the book right in front of me because there's so many names, right, guys? And um, if I'm going to be attacked, I want to be attacked because I said it right. So let's get it right, right? Uh, we'll get back to that in the upcoming weeks as to who everybody Leah had. But remember, I told you she named her daughter Dina. Why is that important? Because there's a discrepancy with the mothers, right? Is it Adina or is it Milka? Well, that name Dina is so close to Adina. I feel like I know who's the mother of who in this, right? I told y'all that a few weeks ago. And like I told y'all, this is not in Torah. So we can only speculate. But I'll tell you what I did with Torah. I wanted to see in Torah, who does the Torah validate, right? Who do we hear about in the Torah later, right? Because that, to me, is going to be a big clue. Now, who do we hear about later? Well, we hear about two matriarchs later. We definitely do. Uh, we hear about Leah in the book of Ruth, outside of Genesis, right? 
But we hear about Rachel in the book of Ruth, in the book of Jeremiah. We hear about her even in the hijack books, Matthew, Revelations. You know, in the hijack book, they try to actually uh, link that line to to the nobility, right? They got to do that because they got to make this dude relevant, right? JC, they have to make him relevant, just like they try to do with David. So we ain't here for David, right? Listen, they have to validate that line that they want to come later on, even though you see Leah with the Holy Grail, right? The scepter won't depart from Judah. Till the rightful ruler comes, guys. So, you know, you see Rachel all through this book, right? Hold on to the book of Ruth, guys. Hold on to the book of Ruth. Because I told y'all, they won't give us no good books. They keep giving us these hijacked books. They gave us Ruth and they gave us Esther as our foundational ladies, right, guys? This is who they gave us. Where are our books? Because these are not the stories of righteous women. Ruth is a Moabitess. Okay? Now, I'm going to bring y'all a verse later on. So somebody going to have to rectify me why we got a book of a Moabitess in our Torah. Who approved these books? Told y'all I link Rome to Levi, to Moses. Right, guys? Who approved these books? And why are these the ladies we're supposed to be looking up to? The book of Ruth mentions both the matriarchs, trying to say both the matriarchs are the the founders of, uh, are the mothers of Israel. Show me and prove to me that. Show and prove to me that uh, both of these ladies are the matriarchs of Israel. Because I see something different, y'all. I see something way different. Yeah, I think I know why the creator keeps saying Israel and Judah. I think I know why. So I'm going to take y'all on that journey. All right. Took me a long time to get here. I'm going to take y'all on this journey as to why Rachel is weeping. Because when we find Rachel again, she's in our prophets, guys. She's in that IJE. What did I tell y'all? What did I tell y'all, guys? It better be in one of those books. Right, guys? Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel. It better be in that IJE. And she is. So let's go to what she's doing in the book of Jeremiah. What is Rachel doing? Why is Rachel mentioned? How did we come from Esther to this? I'm going to show y'all. I'm going to show y'all. Because I see a pattern of them allowing the books they want us to look up to in there. Of these so-called women. These ain't no, these ain't no, uh, matter of fact, we linked, uh, listen guys, Mordecai, remember, Mordecai got the king's ring. And I'm going to show y'all why he got that ring later on. Hold on to it, because it very much involves Rachel. Let's keep going. So we're going to go to the book of Jeremiah. 31, 15 through 22, right? Um, Let's go down to the KJV. At some point, we really got to get out of this book, though, guys. But I know this is the one everybody follows, right? But y'all know I don't roll with the kings and their carcasses. All right, Jeremiah 31, 15 through 22. This is the KJV. Thus saith the Lord, a voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation. And bitter weeping. Rachel. See, they have Rahel right here, but I'm going to show you just above. We got Rachel. Okay. KJV trying to fool you. Right there is Rachel, guys. Right there. It, it won't let me highlight without highlighting this whole verse. So there's Rachel for you. All right. For whatever reason down here, they have the translation as Rahel. Okay. Uh, Let me go back to the top because I think by going up and down, I might have, you know, lost the continuity of it. All right. Thus saith the Lord, a voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation and bitter weeping. Rachel, weeping for her children, refused to be comforted for her children because they were not. Thus saith the Lord, refrain thy voice from weeping 
and thine eyes from tears, for thy work shall be rewarded, saith the Lord. And they shall come again from the land of the enemy. And there is hope in thine end, saith the Lord, that thy children shall come again to their own border. I have surely heard Ephraim bemoaning himself thus. Thou hast chastised me, and I was chastised. As a bullock, unaccustomed to the yoke, turn thou me, and I shall be turned, for thou art the Lord my God. Surely after that I was turned, I repented, and after that I was instructed, I smote upon my thigh. I was ashamed, yea, even confounded before I did bear the reproach of my youth. Is Ephraim my dear son? Is he a pleasant child? For since I spake against him, I do earnestly remember him still. Therefore, my bowels are troubled for him. I will surely have mercy upon him, saith the Lord. Set thee up way marks. Make thee high heaps. Set thine heart towards the highway, even the way which thou winnest. Turn again, O virgin of Israel. Turn again to these thy cities. How long wilt thou go about, O thou backsliding daughter? For the Lord hath created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall compass a man. You know, when you ask someone what that last sentence means, right, in these camps, they don't seem to know. <clears throat> the women will outnumber the men. Oh, yeah, we will. The stranger's going to bring back your children. Remember that? I'll link that verse later on for you guys. But let's go here. We got Rachel. Weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted. Who is Rachel's children? Joseph, Benjamin. That's it. That's all Rachel had. Joseph, Benjamin. Why is Benjamin in the southern kingdom? Huh. <sighs> Joseph and Benjamin is all Rachel had. She died giving birth to Benjamin. This is all she has. Okay. Yet she's the only one mentioned outside of Genesis. Right? I told you they link her to the New Testament. Why? Why is it Rachel and why is Rachel crying and why is she unable to be comforted? Why her or her children no more? It says Rachel weeping for her children refused to be comforted for her children because they were not. Where are her children, guys? Why can't she be comforted? Then we get to Ephraim. How do we go from Rachel to her children, to Israel, to Ephraim. Well, because Joseph's blessing passed on to Ephraim and Manasseh. They would have a portion. That was the way the Creator wanted it. So that's why you're going to hear Ephraim mentioned as it pertains to Rachel. Okay, guys. So today we learn Rachel is weeping. All right, guys. I got to take y'all to the next, uh, the next, uh, link that I have in here because, um, and then we're going to stop here and then we're going to keep on going to find out, um, how this all ties to Esther and how it ties to Ruth and just how this all ties to the Kens back here. You see the Kens? All right, guys, it's going to be a long journey, but I need y'all to keep up. All right, we got to find out what happened to us. So you're going to watch 
silly crap all week. All right, y'all. Y'all know it. Give me what? 30, 40 minutes of your time to find out what happened to you. All right, let's go to Rachel. I like this article right here, guys, because we need to get a little more background information about Rachel, right? All right, the legacy. Uh, there is one more twist to the story. Rachel, who died young, becomes an image of tragic womanhood. Her tomb remained as a landmark and a testimony to her. She and Leah were remembered as the two who together, this is the, this is what's in the Book of Ruth, guys. I told y'all the Book of Ruth. We got to bring in the Book of Ruth. Right, guys? Yeah. Because this is the claim made in the Book of Ruth. She and Leah, right here, were remembered as the two who together built up the house of Israel. And that's in Ruth 4 and 11. Rachel was the ancest sorry, ancestress of the northern kingdom, which was called Ephraim, after Joseph's son. After Ephraim and Benjamin were exiled by the Assyrians, Rachel was remembered as the classic mother who mourns and intercedes for her children because they were no more. Remember, that's what the text just told us in the Torah. Rachel is weeping because they were no more. All right, let's go down to the next uh, paragraph. More than a hundred years after the exile of the North, Jeremiah had a vision of Rachel still mourning, still grieving for her lost children. Do you get what it's saying? They thought that it was fulfilled right here in the paragraph above because they said, you know, everybody was taken into captivity. So, you know, everybody's thinking that it's fulfilled up here. But Jeremiah has his vision a hundred years after the exile. And she's still weeping. Let's go. It's telling you right here. Jeremiah had a vision of Rachel still mourning, still grieving for her lost children. Moreover, he realized that her mourning served as an effective intercession for God promised to reward her efforts and return her children. After the biblical period, Mother Rachel continued to be celebrated as a powerful intercessor for the people of Israel. Rachel is connected to Israel. Through Sarah, right, guys? And we're talking about Ephraim. And we're talking about the northern kingdom being under Rachel's banner, guys. Rachel, right here. Her tomb remained. Remember, she's not buried in the cave of uh, the doubles, Machpelah. She's buried on her own, on the way to Ramah. That's why she's crying on the way to Ramah. That's where she died, y'all. Okay. So this week, we just talking about Rachel and all of the events, how she's then Jeremiah, how we, we only see her mentioned outside of the book of Genesis and Ruth. We only see Rachel mentioned, not Leah. So hold on to that. We're going on our journey and we're going to find out why. If you want to fast forward to the next episode, you're more than welcome to. I'll probably release them both today. All right. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, we're going to continue this uh, with talking about that exile. Because remember, it's uh, Rachel's children are exiled uh, by the Assyrians. They are not exiled by the Babylonians. All right. They are exiled uh, by the Assyrians. OK, you have uh, Ephraim and Benjamin exiled by the Assyrians. OK, remember, we talk about the Babylonian exiled, too, but the Babylonian, um, the Babylonian invasion only affected uh, the southern kingdom. OK, the Assyrians took the northern and uh, the Babylonians took the southern. All right. All right, guys, I'll see you guys. Uh, and a few for the next episode.
But now we know why Rachel is weeping, right? We know a little bit why. All right, let's keep digging. See you guys next week. Thanks for tuning in.